I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Today, next, I have is the approval of today's agenda. I'm making a motion to approve the agenda for today. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I have approval of minutes of 715 and 720. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes for July 15, 2020, and July 20th, 2020, as presented. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We know everybody that's on Zoom, correct? Okay. And next I have is approval of claims for payment. I will make a motion to approve the July 22nd, 2020 claims for payment. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Utility permits. No utility permits on good roads. No. All right, so we got our road done by a lane, 170, so that's open. So uh, all the survey paperwork is being done, and then we'll go ahead and purchase that land from her. So that was nice of her to do that for us. Um, and that was a lane for Rick's house yes. on uh, 170 Street. Street. Okay. Yes, and without that road, it is maybe like a 12 mile trip around. Oh, gosh. So yeah, it's a road we do need to keep. Uh, S75, they're putting the last culvert in now. Uh, Grundy County is starting to get a little upset at us, but we've had a few snags. You now we had a seven inch rain. Uh, then they also found an old culvert underneath the other one. So this would have been a culvert from before the 70s. That in the 70s, they decided to not remove it. So just to save themselves some works and then it just creates more work right. for us now. So right. yeah, it's kind of part of the delays. It's closed a lot longer than we planned, but we're on the home stretch. And then, yes. Okay, then one of these bridges, uh, we had to threaten an endangered species of some three different breeds of mussels you got there in front of you. And uh, so this is kind of a DNR, big brother kind of thing. And it's okay, because it's an endangered species, but it cost us $12,000 to get the survey done and it'll cost us $24,000 to relocate them down the stream. So just so you're aware 24 that- 24 plus the so 36. 12. So yes, $36,000 total to relocate these muscles. Okay. Yeah, so then they'll come next year before the project and- Who does that? I'm just curious. Oh. Is there a contractor? Yes, yeah, it, it, it was a contract. Okay. Yeah, it was some private company. Okay. So I feel like they gave Bruce a list and there's only like two or three places in Iowa. Okay. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yes. And uh, I don't know if you saw the Facebook post, but Gifford Bridge Deck has been bored and they've worked on two abutments. So that's moving along as well. So that's still aimed kind of at Labor Day opening. Okay. So people know when their highway's back open. Okay. All right. That's yeah. all my updates for you. Sounds good. All right. Thank Greg, you, Taylor. Grindy, Grindy's on half of that. For that uh, highway of the thirty-six thousand. No, that's a, no that that's a South Fork oh. Bridge. Oh, that's bridge. South Fork. Okay. Yep, yep. That's all us. Okay. Well, stay up there. Yep. Next we have is the bridge replacement on S twenty-seven over Tipton Creek. Yep. So this is a uh, the bridge that we really need to do next year. Uh, it's on a county highway, obviously, and the reason I wanted to do it is because uh, we have a crane company between that and another bridge that's also going to be in the low grade at some point, so I did not want to hamstring them by having a bridge embargo both ways out of their business. So we moved this one up a couple years and we'll get it done before the other one starts having the same problem. And Knowing that we may have a lot more traffic in that area with a potential wind development yes. project that is probably good to get this you know, taken care of now. So we have that foresight. Very true. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw the location <laughs> and everything. I was thinking, okay, this would probably be a good thing to make sure we have this one done and in place. So, okay. 
Uh, I'd go ahead and make a motion to approve the final plans for uh, project BRS dash SWAP dash CO42 sub 63 FF42. It would be the bridge over Tipton Creek. I will second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call. BJ. Aye. Renee. Aye. Lance. Aye. Motion carried. Now we have is the bridge replacement on M Avenue over Southport. So this is the one where your muscles are at. But Bruce has said that he got a call from the DOT today and he asked me to not approve this today. So okay. whether you want to table or deny it, either way works. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to table uh, this uh, bridge over the South Fork as recommended by Engineer Wall. I will second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? You'll put it back on when they are ready. Yes. Okay. Do you have a discussion? There you go. More. All in favor say aye. 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 Which carries. Uh, tax abatement, Ellsworth Neighborhood Investment Group. Uh, after conferring with uh, County Attorney Meyer and Assessor uh, Nell, uh, I'm going to ask the table the two abatements for a little further clarification and research. Jessica would like to speak on that. Oh. Uh, yeah. Get her on there. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I got a motion on the floor. Hang on a sec. If you second. Yeah, I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Go ahead, Jessica. You should have the paperwork ahead of you because I gave it to Angela yesterday and Daryl was unaware of that. I had it prepared last week, but I didn't give it to Angela in time to distribute it. Daryl made a agreement with the attorney representing that group that included a lump sum fee to cover all of the um 16 parcels even though it should have been 15 and when it came down to it when michelle discovered the 16th parcel was in there um the amount that they settled on total ended up being 855 dollars less than what is actually owed so the abatement in front of you basically asks you to allow us to take the settlement from the 15 parcels apply that settlement that was agreed upon to those 15 parcels. There's a little bit left over. We apply that extra towards this 16th parcel and the amount left for the taxpayer to pay is 855. But Daryl has indicated to both Michelle and I that, she, they, that they agreed to the set price that they've already paid and therefore we're asking you to forgive the 855 so that this would be all wrapped up and paid and done and we would go on with the next year. Okay. Any, any questions? No. And yeah. that, that is accurate. And the reason, one of the reasons why I was um, okay with tabling this was because I didn't want to just double check with the assessor and with Jessica about this, but that is all accurate. and. Uh, at least on the one item unit parcel that ends in 104, I do believe that it would be appropriate to go forward with that one. So given that and the fact that the paperwork is now before you, I think uh, you should probably take action on that one. Okay. So you'd I have have to, you'd have to defeat the motion to table right. both. Right. Mm -hmm. So the motion I have on the floor is to table both. Do we want to call the vote or make an amendment? What's your choice? Uh, I'll call for the vote, Lance. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion fails. Or motion, well, fails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now I have the tax abatement on the Ellsworth Neighborhood Investment Group. Okay, I will make, a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll make a motion to approve the tax abatement on parcel, let me see, 89-20-18-159-104 of the Ellsworth Neighborhood Investment Group, LLC. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Um, I, I know uh, talking to the assessor earlier, I don't know if they know everything going on. You went upstairs and talked to them. I did. I did. I did talk to Don right before the meeting and gave him 
kind of the reason why this unit 104 is on for the abatement and I fully might come up and give him some additional explanation but it is accurate that on with the dispute that uh, we had that this the total number the dollar number that we had agreed to on all the units needed to be spread over uh, probably only 15 but it turned out we spread it over 16 so we're kind of making an adjustment on this unit because it would incorporate the overall dollar figure that we agreed to and we and the agreed we are going to be short 855 dollars overall correct yes. okay. but that's that's less than what Ellsworth had asked us to forgive overall. So we did get an extra $3,800 out of them over what they had originally uh, thought that they should have paid. So um, it, it was it was part of that compromise, that settlement that we had with them. Okay. okay. And any other discussion? Hearing no more, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries. Did we have that second abatement on there? There isn't another one. Okay. Well, from there, let's go to the COVID update. Yeah. Well, just, second one. Oh, I thought there was. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the second abatement. I will make a motion to table action on the uh, parcel number 89-20-18-159-026 of the Ellsworth Neighborhood Investment Group, LLC, to table the abatement. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no more, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is COVID-19 update. Thomas? Or Rocky. I think Rocky. Rocky was. It's either one of them. I'm here. Um, so uh, COVID is moving on. It's not, uh, we continue to just have cases here and there that are popping up like one every couple of days or two every couple of days. Um, we're still running into uh, issues with the reporting of them. So sometimes it looks like we have large number um, show up, but it's in how the tests are being reported from the state of Iowa to uh, public health. Um, we worked with uh, Judge Haney and Tina Ganzeveld yesterday and uh, court is open and we have a process that we're working on right now uh, with the security people and the way that we're going to check people into the court floor and into the courtrooms. Um, that's all been uh, agreed on yesterday. And then uh, the last thing, and I will have to get with Daryl yet, is that uh, the state was given a, I don't know what they call it, judicial order or whatever that came down and said that they could not do uh, they could not use the court floor, so the courtrooms or anything like that for uh, depositions in the future uh, during this COVID. And so um, I think Jessica Laura has uh, scheduled your guys' room and the one upstairs maybe for uh, depositions, but Daryl and I were going to get together and talk about whether he was able to use uh, the emergency operations training facility over here. Uh, the big room so they could social distance and still do depositions, even though something might come up on a day when you guys are meeting. And so we'll talk about that later. And then uh, we're still getting supplies. Um, we're not getting them as often from Iowa Homeland Security. I have a, a shipment coming in this morning um, for the healthcare facilities. Uh, the health healthcare facilities are mostly on their own right now, getting uh, supplies from their own vendors. Um, I'm still trying to get some stuff. Uh, the sheriff's office and the jail have not been able to get some stuff. And um, Dave 
had a contact and I've been able to work with that contact and being able to pull supplies from an ag business that can get us supplies enough to take care of the business. So we're still moving forward and uh, we still meet every week. Um, Matt did order the uh, temperature screening devices. That's gonna be about a three to four week delivery. So that'll be out a ways. And uh, between now and then, um, the EOC group will work on whether we have a policy about the employees and checking everybody coming through that door and checking their temperatures and all of that stuff. We'll be working through that process and discussions uh, to see how we do that process. But um, everything else is moving forward and we're, we're doing well. Sounds good, thank you. Any questions? No. Nope. From there, let's go to public comments. Should have the Lance, ability. To... Who do I have? Lance, uh, this is Donna. I have a question for Thomas. Go ahead, Thomas, Donna. Thomas, has there been any discussion regarding masks or anything in public schools? Um, yes, and uh, each school is making their own decision and Rocky's been working with those. So I'm gonna allow Rocky to uh, chime in on that one. I have not been in on those, but um, from the emails I've seen, it's an individual school decision. So Rocky. Yeah, so just to add to that, it seems, um, you know, the governor kind of gave the school districts free reign to kind of decide their plans. Um, so I know that they've kind of been working on their return to learn plans as far as that goes. And looking into the mask wearing, the different social distancing, like in the classrooms, and then lumping students together and not allowing for, you know, kind of like a cross contamination with the different students. So um, they've, they've got a long road ahead of them, but I think they have to have their plans done by August 1st, which doesn't really give a whole lot of time before school starts, but they have been working on it and really thinking about every scenario. So I'm not exactly sure what each individual school district is thinking right now, but they're they're working on it, so. Thank you. Any other public comments? Um, yes, I'm Julie Dunn. Was there, go ahead. Um, I'm asking Daryl Meyer, um, because we have an armed guard, a $70,000 armed guard at the door, was there a law that came um, starting July 1st concerning armed guards and um, guns in public buildings. Do you know anything about that? Uh, no, I, I don't, but I can check on that. Um, I, know that the, I will. I know that the, the court doesn't allow firearms in you know, the, the courtroom areas of the, the courthouse. Uh, so I'll check to see if there has been something new that's been issued or the legislature did something that took effect. So I'll check on that for you. Okay, good. But I just want to reiterate it. It's, um, in this time of uncertainty and revenues, it's a waste of money. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, I have, I have a question. Um, I've kind of been ahead, out of commission. I've kind of been out of commission for a while. And um, so I'm not quite sure what all these are about. But um, I see on the agendas, we have a lot of um, like closed session meetings. Um, what, what, what are those all about? I mean, does have those been discussed what they've been about or before or um, does the general public know what those closed session meetings are about? Pauline, I'll, I'll leave it to Daryl to address that. Um, the, the code sections that we cite um, should give the public uh, adequate information about the nature of what is being discussed with the fact that 
we're going into closed session, sometimes even saying what we're going into closed session uh, shouldn't even be made public. Um, for example, today or, or tomorrow, or I guess it will be today, we're going into closed session under uh, 21.5 sub 1 sub A, and that is because the information that we will be uh, discussing is uh, covered by uh, non-disclosure agreements and under Iowa code there's also a trade secret statute that would probably be uh, it would be covered by that so even even mentioning what we're going into closed session about uh, runs the risk of I guess uh, violating our, our need to maintain confidentiality subsection 1c deals with uh, litigation and that is also even probably more sensitive to even to say, saying what we're going to go into closed session and discuss because that kind of tips the hand, uh, kind of defeats the purpose of going into closed session if you're telling people what you're going into closed session to discuss. So uh, hopefully those code sections give you adequate notice um, about the nature of, of what we're going into closed session about. Well, but I mean to the plain common Joe person, I mean, we don't have Iowa code books to look up all of these codes. I guess if we go on the internet, we can look them up, but um, yeah, you just have to Google the codes, the Iowa code sections. That, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Any other business? From there, I could ask to recess. I'd make a motion to recess. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? We will be recessing till 1130. Any other discussion? Hearing no more, all in favor say aye. 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 Carries, we're recessed.